the promise of a victorious life over adversity. Romans 8, 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is it that condemns Christ Jesus who died? More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We consider, we are considered rather a sheep to be slaughtered. Nay, Verse 37, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, hallelujah, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height or depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If God is for us, if God be for us, who can prevail against us? Yes, people can be against us, but who will prevail? Who can prevail against God's elect, God's children who carry God's DNA? Nothing can be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Difficulties, persecution, danger, threats, all these things will not be able to overcome us. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. What does it mean to be more than a conqueror? In the last World Cup, you can see smiles on soccer lovers. France conquered Croatia. They have a nice uniform that looks like Embassava Matatus great team, but they were conquered. France conquered the world and they are the reigning World Cup champions. But prior to that, who was the reigning champion? Spain. Spain and Germany. I got it all mixed up. But that is the point. These guys conquered the world. You should have seen the celebration in Paris in that great square. Thousands of people coming to celebrate their victory. They are overcomers. But in the next season, they might not win it. It just might be Brazil. They are conquerors, but they are not more than conquerors. They were conquered. Spain, the great Spanish team was conquered. The great German, the, the efficiency of the German machines was finally conquered. They were conquerors, but they were not more than conquerors. They were overcame, overcome again. What does it mean to be more than a conqueror? To be more than a conqueror means you're fighting not for victory, but from victory. Christ won the victory for the church. Christ won the victory for us. All we need to do is to take our position, stand our ground, resist the devil. He will flee from us. We are not fighting for victory. Christ won it for us. We are victors. I am the head of the kingdom. I am a born win. Hallelujah. I have the Holy Ghost. To be more than a conqueror means you are fighting not for victory, but from victory point of view. We are reinforcing Christ's victory. By the way, we are watching a game whose outcome is predetermined. What we are seeing through life, the outcome is predetermined. Christ vanquished the enemy, hallelujah. What we are watching is a replay. I know sometimes the devil may look like he's one goal up. 
it's just half time. Hang on, second half is coming in Jesus' name. There are times you feel like the enemy has scored some victory. You are down and almost out. That's just half time. Victory is coming. It's guaranteed. It's sealed through the cross. The devil was disarmed. Christ made a public spectacle, triumphing over him by the power of the cross. The outcome is predetermined. We know the scoreline. 10 mil. <laughs> Technical knockout. That's what the cross is all about. Technical. And the devil threw in the gloves in the ring as a sign of it's over. It's over. It's de he's defeated. But you know, Paul as a great apostle had his own low moments. How close with us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 to 11 the apostle says of his tribulation in Asia we don't know the details are not given but listen to his language and his demeanor we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body Paul is saying there are moments I am cast down there are moments I'm pressed hard there's a moment I'm almost in despair yes that's when the devil is saying I have overcome I've fixed that guy he's done he's sunk but the apostle is saying yes we go through these seasons we are hard pressed from every side the pressure on the apostle can be felt in this writings. I, we are pressed hard from every side. Nowhere to turn. The back against the wall caught between the rock and the hard place is an understatement. We are hemmed in. It is so tight. It's so difficult. But we are not crushed. We are perplexed. We are harassed from everywhere. But we are not in despair. We are persecuted. The enemy has been on our case. But we are not abandoned. We are struck down. But we are not dis uh, destroyed. We bounce back again. Hallelujah. Yes, pressed down. But we will bounce back again finally in the sunset of his days the apostle pens these words we use in funeral services i have fought the good fight that was a nice fight hallelujah never you really tried i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the fate now what i lie waits me in glory is a crown of righteousness i overcame the devil i overcame the flesh i have overcame demons i have overcame all the sorts of opposition now awaits me the crown of glory. Yes, there were moments when the devil was too near up, but now I bounce back again by the grace of God. I have finished. The devil has gotten a resounding defeat. You're an overcomer. I know I'm speaking to people who may feel cornered, caught between the rock and the hard place when things are so difficult for you. You are tempted to compromise. You are tempted to cut corners. I'm here to remind you, you may be down, but you're not out. Rise up in Jesus' name. Shake off the dust and run the race. God is strengthening you underneath are the everlasting arms. You've hit rock bottom, but the hand of God will pick you again. Shake off discouragement. Shake off criticism. Shake off all those things, the arrows of the enemy. Rise up again and run the rest that he said before you you're more than a conqueror Christ will lead you in a triumphal procession now that is borrowed from the ancient Roman world in the ancient Roman world when the general was sent out to go and conquer new territories and fight enemies battle if that general killed 5,000 people and carried some people as captives he will come back to Rome amidst celebration and rejoicing. Now Caesar will prepare a golden chariot. This general will mount up to this chariot with the family and all those captives, the booty, following and clapping and trying to cheer these great generals through the streets of Rome. Finally, it will end up in the amphitheater. 
in the Colosseum where all these captives will now be subjected to fight with the beast, with the lion and the tigers and where they were gored and gorged by those wild animals amidst clapping and celebration and the, that this general is reading a triumphal procession. Jesus is saying on a daily basis he will lead us in a triumphal of victory. Yes, you may feel that you're down and out but Christ is leading you on a triumphal procession. Hallelujah. Celebration of victory because his seal is done. He will lead his church. He will lead his church in a triumphal procession. Not once in a while. Thanks be to God who daily leads us in a triumphal procession. It's as though Christ is declaring to the powers that be, I cornered you at the cross. And that one is cornering you there. Am I giving them an escort? There's royal presence, royalty presence. There's angels around to cheer you up. You have divine resources to help you bounce back again from that devastating failure, from that mistake, from that sin. God wants you to bounce back. He has given you his DNA that is unkillable, that is unstoppable, so that you can bounce back again and run the race until you win the victory that God has apprehended for you in Christ Jesus. You're more than a conqueror. Oh, it doesn't matter how it feels like. You're more than a conqueror. We are not saved by feelings, by the fact that Christ died for us. We are more than conquerors. I invite you to stand in the presence of God. We have the promise of God, number one, of victory against the adversary. Number two, victory against the world. Thirdly, victory against the flesh or over the flesh. And finally, victory over adversary, over sufferings, over victimization, over all those things today. Go ahead and worship the Lord and thank God that he has given you victory. Yes, I know it's been difficult. Life has been so challenging for you, but today I want you to declare and assert and pronounce that I'm victor. I am bouncing back in Jesus' name. It's just half time. The game plan is changing. God is playing to my favor and to my advantage. I'm going to win. I'm going to rise up from these ruins. I'm going to rise up from this quagmire in Jesus' name. You see a righteous man may fall seven times, but they rise up again. Don't stay. Don't lament. Don't wallow in self-pity. Rise up in Jesus' name. Proclaim the victory over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's worship the Lord, congregation. Let's worship the Lord. And as we do so, there may be people here battling some serious battles internal battles, internal struggles I want to pray for you that God will grant you today the victory in Jesus name. You must master that thing before it masters you. You must control it. You must tame it before it tempts your career, it tempts your family and stops you from your destiny in Jesus name. Some of us are battling with sin. We have tried all we can to stop it but we are unable to. Today in Jesus name we want to declare in Jesus name we are crucified with Christ nevertheless we live yet not us, but Christ who lives in us. The, now, the life we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and died for us. If you need prayer, just come here. Just come quickly. We don't want to extend it. My time is long gone. Just come. Just come in Jesus' name. Just come. Just come. You've been struggling. Some of you are very discouraged. You suffered some setback, some failure in your life. Just come. Today is your day of being renewed in Jesus' name, of rising up again and saying, yes, I've been cursed, I've been perplexed, I have been hard-pressed, but I'm rising up again by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. From the balcony, up the balcony, make your way here. Please come, please come, let's pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's pray, congregation. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Oh, we thank you for the victory you secured for us at Golgotha. I'll cover you, oh God. You secured our victory. You defeated our enemy, oh God. You made a public spectacle, triumphing over him by the power of the cross. Today, as your children, oh God, we cry to you, turning away from our sins, oh God, our own failures and mistakes, oh God. Wash us, cleanse us, and purify us, Lord. As it happened in Gilgal, circumcise our hearts, roll away the reproach that has dogged our lives, oh God, our careers, Lord, and our 
families, Lord. We declare today we are beginning a new chapter of a walk with you, oh God. A walk of triumph, oh God. A walk of taking our spiritual inheritance, the life of conquest in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. The power of the flesh, the power of the enemy of our lives is broken in Jesus' name. The Lord touch you right now. Let the Lord touch you right now. Receive that touch. Receive that touch. Receive that touch in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen.